Let's discuss how the glands could be better described uh, depending on their shapes. So in every exocrine gland you have a duct and a secretory portion. If there is a single duct you call it simple gland. So we have simple glands with just one duct without any branching. The secretory portion could have a shape of a tubule this would be a secretory portion if it's a tubule you simply call it simple tubular gland An example would be intestinal crypts or glands of the endometrium. The whole tubule could be also twisted and coiled So actually, when you make a histological section through it, what you see is multiple profiles of various parts of the tubule. You will call that simple coiled tubular gland, and uh, that's the shape of human sweat glands. Other shapes of the uh, secretory portion might be alveoli or a sinus. A singular would be a sinus, which is similar to alveoli, but cells are filling most of the space. So this is alveolus. alveolus, and this is a sinus. If the there is only single duct, but the secretory portion is branched, such in in this tubular example, you call it simple. tubular branched or simple branched tubular perhaps. Uh, this is uh, how the uh, gastric glands look like. Gastric glands proper in the fundus and in the body of the stomach or how the mucus Brunner's glands of duodenum look like. You can have one duct and a branched alveolar shape with actually many cells and the holocrine secretion pattern. We already know what it is. So that would be simple branched alveolar gland and it is how uh, sebaceous glands look like. What if the duct is branching into a whole system of ducts? Then we call these glands compound. Compound glands have branched 
system or tree of ducts. So there is a main duct, there are smaller ducts and a confluence of next generations of ducts, etc. And on the periphery there could be uh, a sine, for example. Okay, a sine. So you will call that a compound assigner blend. And this is a, that's a topologic scheme of the exocrine portion of pancreas. Okay? Or the parotid gland. If there is a tree of ducts with several generations of branching, I'm not drawing all of these, but uh, the secretory portions are tubules or a sine. You'll call that a compound tubo sorry tubulo assigner gland. An example would be this mixed serum mucus uh, glands we already discussed where the mucus tubules occur right next to serous assignee. Because serous cells, these pyramid shaped cells, have a tendency to be organized in assignee, while the cylindrical mucus cells have a tendency to, to be organized in mucus tubules. So the serum mucus glands would be a good example for that. I mean the submandibular gland or sub sublingual gland, these major salivary glands. And there could be also a gland where the circulatory portions would be tubules only. And this is a pattern you could see in the embryonic kidney. So it would be technically a compound tubular gland and that's how the embryonic kidney look like, looks like during the development. In compound glands you have a tree of ducts and uh, there is a main duct that has a confluence of several lower ducts and that originates from the several interlober ducts. That uh, into which several small ducts contribute. They are called uh, interlobular ducts. Because as you go down in the hi hierarchy, and the gland is uh, divided into lobes and lobules, that's reflected by the terminology. Interlobular ducts originate from smaller ducts that are already inside the lobules, that's why we call them intra-lobular ducts. And they originate from the smallest called intercalated
ducts. So there is a whole branching tree of ducts.